Hello, I trust that you're doing well. Welcome to Miss Fountain channel, your go-to destination for insightful and engaging educational content. Here, we explore a wide range of topics from science and history to technology and beyond. Prepare to expand your knowledge and spark your curiosity with our carefully crafted videos. Subscribe now and join us on a journey of discovery. In today's session, we're going to look at postmortem interval, which is often referred to as a uh, time since death. Find that a uh, postmortem interval is the time period between death and examination of the body. And it's important to estimate or to get the postmortem interval because it's, it helps in uh, determining the credibility of the suspect, determining the time of crime or the moment of crime. It also it gives uh, vital leads to the patients that is depending on the case in question. Also excludes uh, suspects as well as uh, checks alibi. It's important, or determining postmortem interval is important in both criminal cases and civil cases. In criminal cases, it's important to catch the killer, and in uh, civil cases, it may import it may be important in deciding who inherits the property, as well as uh, whether at the time of death, an insurance policy was enforced. Those are some of the examples where postmortem interval is uh, applied in both criminal cases and in civil cases. We find that uh, after death, many changes take place in the body. And this is due to physical, metabolic, autolysis, physiochemical, as well as a biochemical process. And they occur in an orderly manner until the body disintegrates. Therefore, the measurement of these changes, along with time used for estimating time since death, or the measurement of these changes, along with the time used, uh, is used uh, for estimating time since death. I'm going to begin with a historical background of postmortem interval. We find that uh, methods of estimating postmortem interval date back to the ancient Greeks and Egyptians. During the 3rd and 4th centuries, they understood that dead bodies cooled and became stiff over a period of time after death. And these are some of the signs that they used, or the factors. If a body is warm and not stiff, it has been dead not more than a couple of hours. And if a body is warm and stiff, it has been dead between a couple of hours and half a day. If a body is cold and stiff, it has been dead between half a day and two days. And if a body is cold and not stiff, it has been dead for more than two days. So basically they used a uh, alga motis and riga motis. When it comes to postmortem changes, we have three classifications. We have immediate, we have early and we have late. For immediate changes, they occur a few minutes after death to a maximum of about 30 minutes. And they include uh, insensibility and loss of voluntary power. We have cessation of uh, respiration. We also have cessation of circulation. Under early changes, they occur between uh, 1 to 36 hours after death. And they include changes in the skin. That is where the skin becomes ashy. As she white becomes pale, she loses her uh, elasticity. Another another one is uh, changes in the eye. We have a uh, opacity in cornea. We have black spot. You see. We also have alga motis. We have liver motis as well as a uh, riga motis. When it comes to late changes, we have decomposition under which you have autolysis and putrefaction. Autolysis is where the cells uh, break themselves. Auto means self and lysis is uh, breaking down so it's the cells breaking themselves we also have putrefaction which is uh being broken down by bacteria uh, another late change is a modification of putrefaction an example is a uh, mummification we need to look at changes in the eye and how they can be used to estimate postmortem interval or time since death the first is a loss of intraocular tension or intraocular pressure. I uh, find that intraocular pressure, which is a 
commonly abbreviated as IOP, falls rapidly after death. Find that uh, the value is at 15 when at death, and then it's, uh, it be falls to 12 after one hour, then to 10 after two hours, then 8.5 at three hours, 7.5 at four hours, and five at eight hours. So the when measuring the intraocular pressure can help estimate the time since death since we are, these values are known. The one is a rising potassium level in vitreous humor. Find that after death, cells around the vitreous chamber break down and, and release their fluid in the vitreous. The concentration of ions slowly increases. Increasing concentration of ions in the vitreous chamber provides a remarkable data of time since death and medical history. This is an image showing the changes that occur in the eye after death that can be used to calculate the postmortem interval. So you have the fall of ocular tension, you have pupils become dilated and fixed, you have loss of uh, papillary reflex, as well as the loss of corneal reflex. So some of the changes that occur in the eye after death. Now we're going to look at alga motives, which is uh, the cooling of the body after death. Body heat falls after death. And this can be used to give a range of time. Not a not a specific answer, but a, a range. A body cools about a, or between 0 0.75 degrees Faraday per hour to 1.5 Faraday. And this is uh, depending on the season. That is a uh, it, when it, because this cooling is affected by the temperature itself, the temperature of the environment. And when getting the or getting to calculate the time since they're using alga motives, we get the rectal temperature of a body. Therefore, time since death using alga motives can be calculated using this formula. Normal body temperature minus rectal temperature is also referred to as a subhepatic temperature, all divided by the rate of fall of temperature per hour. The other factor that can be used to estimate time since death or postmortem interval is rigor mortis, which is the stiffening of muscles caused by depletion of uh, ATP. Uh, rigor mortis sets in in about three to four to six hours, takes 12 hours to complete, stays for another 12 hours, passes off in the next 12 hours. So if a body is at it most rigid states that is uh, in about that is about uh, 12 hours after death or slightly just over 12 hours if there are no visible signs of rigor motives then it's either less than two hours after death or more than 48 hours after death that is uh, before rigor motives sets in and after it's coming in it has passed off. The next uh, factor, or the next that can be used to calculate a postmortem interval is a liver motif, which is the discoloration of the body. And this is a, it begins about two hours after death. And this is where blood settles. As, a, as due to the force of gravity and it settles on the lower side of the body. An example, if a body is lying on its uh, left side, blood is going to settle. Since the, after that there is a cessation of circulation, so the blood is not being pumped, so gravity is going to act on it and the blood is going to settle on the lower side, which is on the left side in our example. And... Uh, that settling is going to result in discoloration of that specific side. And this discoloration becomes permanent after 8 hours. Another factor that can be used to estimate postmortem interval is a stage or is decomposition that is stages of decomposition. We have five stages of decomposition, which is the initial stage which occurs within 2 days after death. And that is uh, 
remember in our previous video we looked at the stages of decomposition so if you've not watched that video kind, kindly watch it so that you can be together in this and the initial stage occurs in between one to two days after death and some of the characteristics is uh We have uh, the internal bacteria within the gastrointestinal tract begin to digest the soft tissues. The temperature falls to that of the ambient temperature and also flies begin to arrive. The next stage is uh, bloating which occurs uh, or takes place within two to six days after death. And there are visible signs of decay, like the inflation of the abdomen, the skin changes, and there is the order of putrefaction may begin to be noticed. And the third stage is a decay. And in this, there is a very strong odor. And it occurs uh, within 5 to 11 days. Sometimes six to ten days, but five to eleven days is covering that uh, the entire range. And in these, uh, the inflated carcass now deflates and putrid internal gases are released. There is strong odor. Uh, also, fluids begin to drain from the openings. That is the decay stage. Then you have the post decay, which occurs between 10 to 25 days after death. And in this, decomposition slows as most of the flesh has been stripped off from the skeleton. And the final stage is a dry decay or skeletal stage, which occurs between uh, or occurs from 24 days and over. And in this, the remains consists primarily of bones and dried skin and cartilage. Yeah. That's how stages of decomposition can be used to estimate post-mortem interval the time since death. The other factor that can be used is insects, where we use the life cycle of insects of death. An example is the blowflies. Find that within hours of death, certain insects arrive to lay eggs on the warm body like the blue flies and uh, the life cycle of a blue fly we have the ad the adult fly that lays eggs that is uh, in less than eight hours after death and then you have the after around to up to about 23 hours we have the first lava stage after another well, after 27 hours, we have the second lava stage. Then after 22 hours, we have the lava stage. That is 22 hours from the previous stage. Then after 130 hours, we have the pupa. And then back to the adult stage. That is 143 hours later. Therefore, using the days, uh, we have less than 8 hours. After death, that is, we have the blue fly eggs. And then you have 20 hours, we have the first lava stage. Four to five days, we have the third lava, in, lava stage. And then eight to 12 days, we have the lava migrate to the dry, to dry place. 18 to 20 days, we have early pupa. 21 to 24 days, pupa case split or split and adults emerge. And here's an example of... Uh, how insects were used to calculate a postmortem interval. Find that a body is found with Lucilia sericata larvae, prepupa, and pupa in soil next to body. Temperature at sites had, had uh, averaged to 16 degrees Celsius. Pupa brought into the lab and held at the temp at that temperature began to enclose after 112 hours development of a rate of sheep blowflies that is a lucidia sericata in hours at three different temperatures we have 
the values therefore to calculate the postmortem interval of that specific case we go to the temperature column where we have up to where we have 16 degrees celsius so we're going to add that of the egg the which is 41 the lava fa first insta which is 53 degrees celsius second insta lava 42 degrees celsius lava that insta 98 degrees celsius pre pupa 140 degrees celsius and pupa 393 degrees celsius So we're going to add these the values that is uh, we're going to add 41 sorry i didn't ignore the degree celsius at 16 degrees celsius we have the values of the egg is 41 that of the first insta is 53 the second is 42 the third is 98 pre is 148 the pupa is 393 so we're going to add 41 to 53 to 42 to 98 to 148 to 393 and then we're going to subtract 112 hours which is a uh, the hour all the time that uh the people began to enclose after then you're going to, to divide with uh 24 hours to get the number of days and our answer is a uh, 26.5 days for that specific case Another content or another factor that can be used to estimate postmortem interval is stomach and intestinal contents. Find that uh, undigested. We have the state. Of, we have a table showing the state of contents as the and the timing of death. So if we have a uh, undigested food present in the stomach, that was death occurred about a zero to two hours after the last meal. And if we have the stomach is empty but food is found in the small intestines death occurred at least four to six hours after a meal and if uh, the small intestine is empty but waste is found in the large intestine death occurred 12 or more hours after a meal that is a graph which is a uh, used to show pmi that is post mortem interval and it's a graph of uh, temperature again is time after death in hours you can see here we have uh, rigor we have lividity which is a uh, liver motif you also have temperature and you have decomposition Another factor that can be used to estimate the time since death is a circumstantial evidence like cell phone records. Like maybe when was the last call? When did they last SMS or send a text to someone? Let us say newspapers. That is when was the last newspaper collected? How many uncollected newspapers are there? What are the dates? Also, unpicked milk bottles. Maybe they picked milk from a certain spot. Uh, there are maybe two milk bottles that have not been picked and maybe they pick a bottle per day So that's going if they are two unpicked That's going to show they've been they've not been come to that point for two days Yeah That's how circumstantial evidence can also be used to estimate postmortem interval And that is uh, the end of our session. Thank you for joining us We hope you've gained valuable insights and knowledge from today's video don't forget to subscribe for more enlightening content. Remember, learning never stops. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.